We love our administration, but at this point, we just feel like um, kind of like let down and not really regarded. The administration says they are working to solve the problem, but with an unclear timeline, employees like Gresham say they hope the solution comes soon. In Augusta, Graham Lee, WJBF News Channel 6. Today, the president of Augusta University gave his final State of the University address. Dr. Brooks Keel is retiring in June. He highlighted last year's big moments, including the enrollment of more than 10,000 students and the official launch of Augusta University online. He also talked about future goals for the university. We've laid an incredible foundation. Uh, you know, we've gotten rid of all the, the baggage that came with the name changes and all that sort of stuff. We have a tremendous sense of pride here we've never had before. Uh, the, the way our research is going now, it's only going to start to get better. Uh, we, we're, our, our enrollment for next fall looks to be higher than the fall we had this time around. There doesn't appear to be an end in sight. Dr. Keel was appointed president of Augusta University in 2015. Colleges in the University System of Georgia are joining other institutions across the country to require either the SAT or the ACT for admission. College officials say the test results are better predictors of student success 
than a high school GPA. The changes start in the fall semester of 2026. Magnolia Cemetery and a cybersecurity firm making a game-changing contribution to USC Aiken. It's Steelgate, and they donated $25,000 to the school, money that will fund scholarships for cybersecurity and computer science students. Each award will be designated for computer science majors with a 3.0 or higher. And the plan is to grant 25 scholarships, 1,000 each, to students from area high schools. We're trying to get the interest of those students and bring out the spotlight that there's a lot of great programs here in the CSRA. And of course, honestly, as those kids, uh, go, where they go to school, a lot of them will stay around that area. Students can apply for the scholarship this fall. They're going to be awarded fall 2025. A local women's basketball team being recognized 43 years after their high school championship. The 1981 Warren County girls won the title that year, never got their rings. But Wednesday afternoon, the team finally put those rings on their fingers in the same gym where they fell in love with the sport. Principal Roderick Hilton says he's had a chance to serve as a basketball coach, and once he found out about the 81 team, he wanted to make sure they got what they deserved. I think it means a lot to them, and let them know that we still care about them, we still love them, and that we're still here to recognize them, that we really appreciate them. They show up to a lot of our events and are very positive in the community and very helpful and positive here at school. So it's just great to be able to Those associated with the school, including the team and staff, said they hope the younger generation will be inspired by this story to make their own mark in school history. Good for them. I love it that they got their rings. The Salvation Army of Augusta hosted its Compassion in Action Awards luncheon today at the Croc Center, honoring volunteers and celebrating big achievements in 2023. Board members, business leaders, and volunteers came together to celebrate the impact the Salvation Army has on the Augusta community. We're talking about 74,000 meals served from the soup kitchen last year, $95,000 in utility assistance to keep people's power on, and 15,000 individuals served through the Army's social services programs. 2023 also saw a growing number of people transitioning from homeless to housed. Because we can't get to the 164 people housed going from homelessness to housing. We can't help just under 700 people stay in their house, uh, houses without uh, an army behind us to make the difference every single day. And the army can't make it happen without that army of volunteers. The 2023 group award went to John Deere, and the individual award winner was Mr. Christmas, Calvin Johnson, who raised more than $4,200 ringing the red kettle bells. I was honored to serve as MC of today's luncheon. Coming up, what's causing pharmacies to run out of Adderall? Yeah, what doctors say you can do to get your prescription. Storms packing up quite a bunch across the sea on Pretty heavy rain as a gusty wind. There's a national shortage of Adderall, and now patients and prescribers are learning how to navigate this new landscape. Adderall is a stimulant used to treat ADHD, and one doctor says a combination of reasons has led to a scarcity of it. Sarah Johnson reports. Last year, I was told, hey, by January, it's supposed to be better. January, okay, by spring, it should be better, and it just keeps getting postponed. Dr. Vismay Sinha, a physician with Ohio Health, says a looming shortage of a popular ADHD medication has caused headaches for both her staff and her patients. But I think also what happened with the pandemic is we saw an increase in mental health concerns as well. So people are now saying, hey, something feels off, something's not right. She says it's an issue that started during the pandemic. According to the FDA, the first notice for a shortage was issued in October of 2022. Since then, the notices from the FDA continued, as did the number of prescriptions being written to treat the disorder. Research from earlier this year found prescriptions for ADHD surged during the pandemic, specifically prescriptions for those ages 20 to 39 years old and women. So we saw a significant increase in demand with already a limited supply. So now our supplies are even less, demand is even higher. So how do you navigate the tug and pull? Sinha says speak with your physician. 
Well, one is going to alternative prescriptions. So if their one medication is not available, we can't find any doses. All right, let's talk about option B. Let's try to change to a medication that might be similar to what you're already taking, similar side effects, similar profile, and let's see if that works. And we'll try to find an equivalent dose for that too. Another solution, different dosage combinations to create the dosage you need, such as two 10 milligrams to create a 20 milligram dose. She also suggests checking with your insurance or pharmacy to see if a 90 day supply is an option. That'll cut back on having to search for your dosage each month. We gotta work together. The patient and the physician needs to work together to be able to find a medication that's gonna work and find a place where they can get it. And doctor says it's also important to remember that this is not the fault of a physician or the pharmacist. And to treat everyone with care as you try to get your prescription filled. We'll be right back. Weather headlines on WJBF News Channel 6. Brought to you by Hickson Roofing. If your roof needs fixing, call Mr. Hickson. At a young age, I'm showing them Monday. Right, I look forward to that, Tim. Indeed. Coming up, five siblings have something special to celebrate. They sure do. A long time coming. The story in a moment. Wow. Spruce up your outdoor space for less this year at Carolina Pottery. Huge selections of quality all-weather wicker and Hollywood furniture, all at our everyday low prices. Visit carolinapottery.com or a store near you. It just keeps... All right, Tim, thanks. Five siblings all making history by graduating together from college. The Pavolo family, quintuplets, born on the 4th of July, no less, all attending Montclair State University in New Jersey. Five different degrees, the first in their family to go to college with degrees in political science, nutrition and food science, biochemistry, English and business. They're so smart. Wow, and they're all five different majors, different interests. The siblings say there was a little bit of healthy competition, but they still held each other accountable. Congratulations to them. Their parents must be relieved. Uh, it's over. There is more coverage you can count on at 4.30. They live in the Baltimore Bridge being taken down with explosives. The next step to get things up and running again.